Hi everyone, we're back with the uh, January edition of Hedera Hashgraphs virtual meetup. I am really excited to be here and we're actually joined by uh, Open Crowd and some of the team that builds Dragon Class, which is a network explorer for Hedera Hashgraph, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am Cooper Coons, the developer evangelist at Hedera, and you can stay in touch with me on Twitter at Cooper underscore Coons. Before kicking it over to the Dragonglass team, I'm going to talk very, very briefly about how Hedera manages historical data. And what this really is, is how mirror nodes work. Um, for part two, which is really the core of today's presentation, I'll kick it over to our guests from OpenCrowd, and they're going to give you a really exciting demo about the types of things that you can build using Dragonglass. For part three, we're going to do uh, quick tutorials for some of those who, who followed along in our last meetup and started building with our JavaScript SDK. And then we're actually going to touch on some really, really exciting ecosystem news from Hedera. And so just to start very quickly, uh, Hedera manages history in a very, very unique way compared to other blockchains or distributed ledgers. In other blockchains, the way that they actually come to consensus is by building this longest chain of sequential blocks. Hedera Hashgraph actually uses the Hashgraph consensus algorithm and comes to a provable guaranteed finality with a probability of one on every single transaction that has ever happened. And what this means is we actually don't need to store the entire history of transactions to prove the current state of the network. And if we can do that, we can do really interesting things and free up a lot of memory and, and bandwidth consumptions for the computers running the Hedera network. And so Hedera's answer to this are mirror nodes. Mirror nodes offer a stored history of all of those transactions that have ever happened on Hedera. They can, also, they can do things like uh, subscription services, which we'll actually talk about later. And they can do this and provide these services in exchange for micropayments with HBAR or other types of business models, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the real core of this problem is that Hedera can handle so many transactions a day. The current estimates are over 9 billion transactions a day that we really couldn't store all of this historically. And so we'll pass this information on to mirror nodes who can store as much or as little of this information as valuable to their business. And so for an end user, you're able to query information from mirror nodes to use in your applications, to get the history of your account balance, uh, to have historical information of the way you've used smart contracts and exchanged assets. And this works just like it would where you're querying from the Hedera main network. It has the same kind of trust model and security guarantees that you otherwise would have. But what the, how this really works uh, is that eventually Hedera's main network will gossip transactions randomly to the mirror network. Currently, we're, we're working on that, and our mirror nodes are in alpha. And, and that's eventually how they're going to work. And the mirror nodes will receive that gossip from the main network and then gossip amongst each other and actually process and come to consensus on transactions like main network nodes would. Um, and so if you are using the Hedera cryptocurrency file service or smart contracts APIs to date, you're probably looking into ways that you can use services like Dragonglass or some of the other mirror node APIs that are out there to get the historical record of those transactions that you've had going on in your Hedera powered application. So with that brief context there, I was actually just going to kick it directly over to OpenCrowd and the team from Dragonglass so that they're able to introduce, your, introduce themselves and talk about the exciting projects that they're building. So you guys should be able to go ahead and start sharing your screen over there, and I will kick it off to you. So thank you, Cooper, and thanks to all of our friends at Hedera for hosting us. Special thanks to Lehman and Nosh, who we've been had the pleasure to work with since 2017. Before we get started on building with Dragonglass discussion and demo, I'd like to introduce some of the, uh, the folks from our side here. So my name is Sean Trainer. I'm one of the founders here at OpenCrowd. 
and I'm joined by Ashu Mahajan, the Dragonglass product manager, Constantine Zemelman, the Open Crowd Hedera technical team lead. On the front end, we've had Igor Eskin working with us. And on the back end, we have the professor and master tester, Dr. Wa Lee. So it's a pleasure to work with all these folks on a, on a daily basis. I thank them all. Let's We're really on. grateful to work with you guys as well. Awesome. So let's get down to the business and what this demo is all about. So the agenda for this session is, first I'm going to tell you what Dragonglass is for a few minutes. Then I'll demo the Dragonglass Explorer live on the main net for about five minutes. Then I'll turn things over to a shoe and he'll demo the auction dApp that we've built using Dragonglass on top of Hedera and walk you through the code and obviously take any questions that uh, the audience might have. Constantine's here as well and him and the team can answer any detailed questions you all might have. Sound good? That sounds perfect on my end. All right, let's get started with what Dragonglass is. So Dragonglass is a cloud-based service that provides Google-like search and developer APIs to live and historical data and events across distributed ledgers, specifically Hedera Hashgraph. At its very core, Dragonglass is a set of tools and APIs which allow developers to quickly and easy, easily develop distributed apps on distributed networks, specifically Hedera, by providing simple access to distributed network data. It provides this data through a number of different options. We have a browser explorer that's similar to Etherscan. We have a simple set of uh, de developer APIs, which we'll demo later. And we're also rolling out our new live subscription service, which Asha will demo uh, with the auction demo. So basically we built Dragonglass because we, you know, here at OpenCrowd, needed it to build our own distributed apps for our clients. We realized it was a time consuming and a bit complex to process a ton of network data and make it easily consumable for a DAP developer. So now let's get started with the Live Explorer demo. Thank you for that, uh, that context about uh, Dragonglass at OpenCrowd. Cool. So the Dragonglass Explorer is intended for both technical and non-technical users. This is the main home page where we have some basic summary information of the network activity. One of the most important things to understand is the network selection option. So by default, you're set to Hedera's mainnet, but you can switch to their testnet or in the future, additional networks will be available, uh, both for private and other public networks. Our vision here is to buy, provide a single set of tools and interfaces for end users and developers to access multi-ledger data. So at the top of the screen, you see a graphical overview of the network, which shows general node location and activity over time. On the right, you have some more high-level metrics, including number of transactions since the start of open availability, as well as the number of accounts created since then as well. This will obviously build up over time. Further down below, we see you know, additional recent network volume metrics, which may be of interest. And if you're ever unsure of what a particular metric is displaying, if you mouse over the little eye information icon, uh, you'll get a full description. Next, we'll take a look at the, uh, the cornerstone of the, uh, one of the cornerstones of the Hedera network, and that's the account. So accounts are so important, we actually provide them access to them in three different places on the homepage. We have accounts from the main menu, we have account access lookup on the right side, and you can actually enter accounts uh, directly into the main search bar as well. So one of the first logical steps that most users go through is they enter their account ID. So in this case, we'll enter 0.0.6244. And that's the standard Hedera account schematic. This will bring up the accounts page. This view is like your bank statement. 
At the top is the account summary with some very basic information. On the right, we have the historical balance for this account, which can be very useful. Down below is the payments and receipts. You know, this is where Dragonglass is actually doing some extra parsing and processing, determining basic debits and credits for this account and providing that to end users. A little further down are all the transactions which are associated with this account from the Hedera network. And the little eye icon uh, on the right is to go to the very detailed level of a transaction where all of the additional attributes on a specific transaction would be available for a user, not just the summary information that's available in the tables. And then, as I said, this is both for end users and for developers. So if you ever need to see the raw transaction, which is actually coming from the record stream from Hedera, we actually uh, store the actual JSON uh, file associated with that transaction and make that available. One other valuable feature, uh, which is pretty cool, we think is, is uh, in the middle of the account summary page, and that's the ability to subscribe to activity associated with that account. To do this, we, you have to be signed into the Dragonglass uh, service. So we'll sign in now and we'll show you how that works. The, uh, I will say the ability to see the whole transaction in the raw record there is immensely valuable, something I use on a, a daily basis. <laughs> Our developers do as well, so that's good to hear. So once we're logged in, we can go to My Profile. And I've already subscribed, but here's what the, you know, once you've, once you've signed in and once you've subscribed, I've subscribed to receive both SMS and email alerts for this account, right? So I don't have to continually come back to the Dragonglass, you know, summary page or dashboard. I can have the platform alert me to any activity that's associated with this account, uh, you know, either through SMS or through email, right? So, with so the, if this account moves cryptocurrency or something like that, you'll actually get a text message, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's that's a very useful feature. Also on the, uh, the My Profile page, especially for developers, these are three critical uh, areas. You do have to be signed up you know, to receive these, but if you're going to use the APIs, this is where you would generate your API keys. If you're gonna be using the live subscription service, that's the next section. And then further down, we expect this to take off, but when individuals, individuals want to submit their own uh, dApps, either for publication in our dApp marketplace or to manage and deploy them in the future. That's, as, that's where all this would take place. So now we'll go to one of the most important features of the Dragonglass Explorer, and that's search. So moving from you know, some standard list views, now we're into you know, Dragonglass providing both Google-like simple search as well as advanced search across all of Hedera's network data. So first we'll do a basic freeform search and see what we can discover within the historical data set. And again, we're all live here on the mainnet in, in case I hadn't mentioned that. So let's try typing in DevOps and see what comes up. I will admit I've never tried to uh, pass random keywords into here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, we think once people discover it, once people understand the memo field associated with the cryptocurrency uh, transactions, it'll become a lot more popular. DevOps is a popular one. We have over 90,000 transactions. You know, so it's quickly searched down from you know, over 30 million transactions, but 90,000 is still a lot to handle. So now let's filter down further, and we're gonna do that through the advanced search, which is the button in the upper right. Here you have a whole host of different attributes in which you can filter down. And you can, you can get down to accounts, contract IDs. Uh, it's really just based on your imagination. This will be great for tax season. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and we'll give you a tax season example. So what I wanna go after is I wanna go after DevOps, Okay, keyword transactions, and I want to do it for 
I want to do it for January 21st to January 22nd. So that's the, the, the transactions that are in question that I need to see. It's loading in correctly. There's always something fun about live demos. Yep. Little you never you never know what's gonna happen. Why don't we hit a reset? Try it one more time. Try typing in advanced DevOps, advanced search, and then let's put those dates in again. All right, we're going to have to. Is it possible that there were just no transactions between this time range between uh, that account and this keyword? There was an hour ago. <clears throat> so that's something that we'll uh, have to look into. But as, okay. You never know. Yep. But this is uh, really nice to have. And, and now I know where I'm going to go if I need to uh, look up transactions between a time window. Absolutely. We'll try and get a. Uh, a little investigation in on that. But let me show you, if we go back to the home page, let me show you the quickest way of seeing all the activity across the Hedera network in one click. And that's if you put in a blank search, okay? What you're gonna see is all the 30 million transactions are going to come up. And then we're still having a problem with our search. Uh, can you open up a, can you do a refresh or open up a, uh, another tab? Just give us one sec, folks. Yeah, no problems at all. Um, if you are in the audience watching this or just hanging out, I highly recommend you go and play around with Dragon Glass yourself. Um, maybe sign up for notifications for some accounts that you find interesting. Um, there are definitely some unique ones out there, some high traffic ones. It looks like we may have lost connectivity with the network. Uh, yes, it is showing me uh, the same on my end, unfortunately. Apologize for that. This has not happened before. <clears throat> you have too many of your engineers on the call, I'm afraid. <laughs> Obviously, okay. But... Coming back, right? Uh, there we are. Yeah, appears to be jumping back. Let's let's try and go through that one more time. Hit that big search again, or no? Why don't we go into um. Why don't we move? Ah, there are 33 million transactions. Yeah, and this is one critical feature that we wanted to show you. Again, there's 33 million transactions. What we've done is we've implemented a series of filters on the left from transaction types to top payer IDs. And so from those 30 million transactions, you know, you can click down. If I want to say, wow, why are those just 47, you know, crypto accounts, what, what have they been deleted for? I can click in them and in an instant, you know, you should have just instant access to 47 records instead of those 30 plus million records. So that's search. Again, we'll look into that hiccup. Sorry about that. 
but we're no, it's all good. This is really exciting and uh, definitely some hidden functionality that even I was not aware of. Yeah, hopefully we're going to peel back the onion and show you a little bit more. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the dev tools. So this is the most important function of the Dragonglass platform are the APIs. These are the APIs that allow developers to access a complete history of all historical transactions on the Hedera network. It's the heart and soul of the Dragonglass platform and the number one enabler for developers to quickly get up and running with their dApps on the Hedera network. And there's three main categories for the APIs, transactions, accounts, and contracts. Now we're not able to show you everything in this short demo, but just like you had the account summary page, there's also a contract summary page. We can't show everything to you. We're gonna, we're gonna save that for another event series, including the DAP marketplace. But this is the um, broad high level overview of the Explorer. And unless we have any questions, I'm gonna wanna close here and give you an overview of the next demo, which if we have switched back to our PowerPoint slide. Now we're going to switch gears and tell you about the auction demo we've created to highlight how straightforward and simple it is to get started developing dApps on the Hedera network using Dragonglass. So this auction demo is a simple one page dApp that will demonstrate the following. Submitting transactions and bids to the Hedera network, executing a smart contract, subscribing to live events, and retrieving historical Hedera data. That sounds with, great. I'm very excited. And with that, I'll turn this over to the Dragonglass product manager, Ashu, and our Hedera technical lead, Constantine. All you guys. Welcome, Constantine and Ashu. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ashu, and I'm the product owner and the project lead for Dragonglass platform. Um, uh, before I actually get into the demo, I would like to thank all the users of this platform, especially thanking those people who have been giving constant feedback to us on the Telegram channel. Thank you all. So <clears throat> what had happened is last week, we decided to build this demo site specifically for this event. And, uh, and I mean, you will probably see a lot of commits on, on the GitHub repository. And it is because we have been committing for the past three days. That, that's how it is. The demo app that we built, uh, uh, demo that is built to showcase the Dragon Developers Tool is an auction site. Since we all at some point have seen or actually used an auction site. The most popular being eBay. Everyone, everyone has seen that, right? So from auction perspective, the key for building any auction site is, first of all, you need fair ordering. Secondly, you need higher th throughput to handle multiple bidders at a, at a given point of time. And Hedera Hashgraph provides both these fair ordering and higher throughput out of the box. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to choose. Other thing is access to the historical data and quick notification for any event which is provided by Dragonglass in this case. And the Dragonglass architecture lets us match Hedera's throughput with lower latency. So this is this this is basically exact. This is the perfect match that you could get. So this seems to be a good example to showcase how you can uh, use Dragonglass to build auction engines, trading engines, or matching engines, or any any such kind of engines of your own. Now, moving on to the next slide. So this is uh, the high level component slide that, uh, uh, that explains what this auction demo is all about. And uh, uh, if you look at the top portion of it, uh, it talks about various functions within this demo app. Namely, starting an auction, offering a bid, and ending an auction. These are three things which we are for which we are using a contract that is deployed on Hedera network. 
and these are all contract calls which we are making apart from that what we are doing is viewing real real time bids viewing the winner of when the auction ends and view the historical bids this for this we are using uh, dragon glass developer tools namely the live subscription service as well as the restful apis all right so here we are so this is the page that uh, shows uh, the demo app this is a screenshot from the demo app and uh, what you are looking at is alice uh, alice's uh, auction uh, auction page where she can on a on a uh, on an on an item she can place a bid and she can sit see who all are placing the bid at the same time she can see what are the historical uh, uh, what all the, are the historical bids which were placed on on a given item if you see in the bottom the table shows the historical bids which that were made on this uh, on on this particular item and on the top you are seeing what is the current bid which is the which is the highest bid at this moment so let me explain it to you further so this is like uh, the what you are looking at is a live thing like current bid is what is happening right now in the network and you are getting it directly so this is not this i am not fetching from the rest api this is not historical data this is live data all right so let me uh, take you all to the actual demo to see exactly what uh, how it works so this is again as as per the slide this is ls uh, uh, home page you the only difference here is this auction has not yet started so what ls want to do is ls has some special fee, special, special privileges to start an auction and uh, now to start an auction she can also bid on an auction so that's how it works so uh, what i'll do on ls behalf is i'll start and start this auction i click on it then the auction has started now let me place a bid of a bid on ls's behalf so i place the bid on ls's behalf now what is happening in the back end is uh, we are placing the bid onto the header network and this also initiates another process or another script which what what that script is doing it's continuously uh, it's it's mimicking the actual scenario actual real world scenario from auction perspective people are going to bid on this item and you can see after ls bob bob has uh, 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 bob has bid now we have ls bid again carol is the top one again ls is top one so you can see the bids are increasing as it is going by so let me uh, explain how this is working so the way it is working is when you initially launch the page if you are coming to the page where uh, an a bid is uh, uh, an auction is already going on and there have there have been historical bidders who have already placed it we will fetch historical bids using the dragon glass apis but if you are there on the page when the bid has not started and the people have are as the people are uh, offering the bid you will directly see those bids on to this page and these are like live events which are which which for which we are using uh, uh, our subscription service live sub live subscription service and after this uh, bid the the time period that we have given for this auction is 2 minutes so for 2 two minutes people are people will keep on um, placing their bids and after 2 minutes you will see who the actual winner is so let's wait and see who's the actual winner i do really love this as a uh, decentralized auction demo that demonstrates uh, fairness and and how important that is into specific type of applications um i i know that we're working on a variety of, of stuff around uh the mathematics and stuff around fairness so that that's great that that's why uh you chose to do this demo if you wanted to build this type of auction on ethereum or some of these other networks uh the actual miner or you know an individual computer a leader uh could influence the order of these bids so this is this is a great one yeah we'd actually love to see us treasury bids uh purchased this way <laughs> all right so finally we have a winner oh my god ls1 and the her last bid is 1036 tiny bar i wish i could get up the post headboard for this much that's a great deal
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is where uh, our demo ends. Now, uh, what I'll do is I'll get into directly into. Uh, uh, before I actually get into the code, I would like to show you how these events are subscribed. How are we getting these messages, live live messages? So if I go to a dragon glass and go to my profile. So these are a couple of subscriptions that I have set up. Right now we are we are supporting two types of subscriptions. One is an event subscription and the other one is a transaction subscription. An event on any contract. Uh, so an event that is uh, that is emitted through a contract call. You can listen to that event. And the way it works is you will provide the filters. In this case, uh, you can see that uh, you can provide the contract ID and you can provide the name of the event that you're subscribing to. So in this case, I am subscribing to higher speed increase. So similarly, the other event I'm subscribing to auction end. So this is how I got the winner. From the so, so does this add a subscription essentially grant access to that portion of your mirror node to the, this API key? Is that how this works? So the way it works is uh, uh, we, as soon as we get the transaction, we check like who have subscribed to this. So based on the filter, we will, we will check who has subscribed to this particular uh, uh, subscription. So based on that, we will we will send send out dragon glass messages for people to consume. This is point to point based, so people can consume that message once consumed, it's gone. That it's, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's, it's it's live subscription. So as soon as we get it, we just post it. That's how it works. So Kipper, we're just literally you you guys are the first person, uh, first people, first audience to see this new functionality. Um, Prior to yesterday, it's it's strictly been a um, historical API pull. This is now moved into um, the live event realm, which which enables applications like this. Wow, that's uh, very exciting. I'm glad that we guys had you uh, on as a guest today. Then it's very timely. Right. I actually have a, a very short code demo at the end uh, that I'll, I'll tease a little bit about that. I think eventually would be a client that consumes it from that real time uh, data stream. So next I'm gonna straight away get into the code walkthrough. So what you're looking at is the call to a dragon glass API for calling the cons uh, 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 contract. Uh, so this is basically you are I'm from, from the UI itself, I'm making a JavaScript call onto this API. What? So it looks like you're passing in the contract ID, which is where the contract exists on the Hedera network. And I'm also uh, passing the name, the function name in as part of the parameter so that I can, I will only see bids and not see any other event that, uh, any other function that was called. Ah, uh, that's great. Yes. And then it looks like you're also looking for a specific time range. Yes, in this case, we have put a time range because uh, we are, uh, while we were building this app, uh, we, we thought we don't want to see anything that had happened before the actual demo starts. So that's why we put it just to showcase that this is also what you can do. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Why would you care about application data from before the demo? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, the final thing is status. You see, you can also filter based on the status. So this is also, you, you have this ability to filter any transaction record, even if the transaction record has failed, as, has a different status, you can fetch that as well as part of uh, this. That's great. You could easily build like a reputation system or, or something like that. And next thing is the event subscription for which we used Spring Cloud AWS messaging uh, and to be able to subscribe to Dragon Glass event queue. And it's, I mean, believe me, it's like, it's hardly 10 line of code that I had to write to be able to subscribe to Dragon Glass. This was so quick. <laughs> the only thing I'm doing here is uh, this thing is provided out of the box. So I'm the only thing I'm, so if you look at the first, uh, first section in this, what I'm doing is I'm, 
setting up a queue messaging template to be able to listen to uh, uh, Dragon Glass uh, event queue asynchronously. That's and I'm, I'm sure you could swap that out with you know event queue messaging or event listeners from other providers that aren't AWS. Yes. Very very easily, I'm sure. Yes, I, I mean this is one of the frame. This is one of the frameworks that we use, but. I mean, you can use in anything you want. We use this specifically because it was quick, like it was rapid development for us. So that's why. And uh, second thing, second uh, uh, the second part is where I'm listening to the Dragon Glass queue. So this is asynchronous. We are asynchronously listening to the queue, and as soon as the message comes on the on the Dragon Glass queue, we have that available to use. That makes sense. Seems very easy. And, so, and this is all we use to subscribe to Dragon Glass messages. So for anyone out there that's building an application, um, if you're not taking notes, feel free to uh, contact Ashu and, and the rest of the uh, open crowd team. <laughs> all right, the next is, uh, uh, next is we got the message. Now we want to show those messages onto the UI. So for that, we chose to use the WebSockets. And uh, again, WebSocket, this is a basic configuration of a WebSocket where I'm setting up an endpoint for a WebSocket and we are setting up a, a, a messaging broker. And finally, what we did is uh, we, uh, by the way, I, I'm, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned this. We use uh, uh, Spring Boot to do all this. And uh, now what I'm doing right now, if you look at this, this part of uh, the code, what, what I'm doing is I am, uh, I am uh, using simple messaging template to push the messages to the broker. And uh, the second part of it is where I'm saying where the message is being sent for which queue of the broker the message is being sent to. Finally, the final portion of the code is where I'm reading the messages on to the UI. First, I subscribe to the uh, to the WebSocket endpoint and uh, uh, and uh, subscribe to a, diff, uh, a queue to get the messages onto the UI. So this uh, ends my demo. So I am ready to take any questions. Uh, I have uh, Constantine with me. We are both will both take questions on anything. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to check the YouTube chat very quickly to see if there's any live questions in there. I think for myself, the only question would be, is there anywhere that people could download and check out this code themselves and maybe play around with your APIs? So yes, this is a public Git GitHub repository, which we're going to share. And we'll have people to look into it. And people can definitely check out the code and see how exactly things are going on. That's fact, awesome. Is that available now, or is that coming out uh, sometime soon? We will. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, it is available. It is public, right? Even right now. It's just okay. That, uh, uh, it's just that we uh, we will let people know where exactly it is. What might be a next ne might be a next day or two, uh, yeah. Cooper. But it's uh, definitely sooner rather than later. Yeah, no problems at all. Let me check. Uh, I'm checking the the YouTube chat right now to see if there are any uh, questions. Someone asked, will I be able to get alerts anytime someone queries my account? Is that? Well, I think it's technically impossible because query is not a transaction, right? So yeah, it could be one node. Somebody queried you, right? I don't, the only record per se that you can see is somebody paid for the query, right? To query your account. but. It's not going to show you anything. So no, it's technically currently impossible. Ah, uh, yes, yes, that makes sense. So, so uh, unfortunately, the Hedera mirror network is unaware if someone's just asking one node what your balance is. Um, eventually, we might be able to do things like notifications for state proofs um, or other things that do have some type of global state awareness. Um, hopefully, that answers your question there. Um, there is some confusion about tax purposes. I'm so sorry if I mentioned that. That was just a one-off thing because you can look up transactions between a specific window. Please don't look or think too much into why I said that one-off example. <laughs> uh, 
Um, cool. It does not seem that there are too many um, outstanding questions at the moment now. Or I guess someone asked, where is the part that small calls the smart contract? Well, the, the, the good part, I mean, the, the, the demo application that calls the smart contract is so easy. So we decided not to share the code because it's just a simple demo that executes uh, like a couple of calls. I think uh, we just took a standard contract from the learning solidity by example document, uh, slightly modified it. It's nothing I think that should be a subject of today's meeting. So it's so simple. And everybody knows probably by now how to write smart contracts and call them on, on Hedera. So we wanted to actually show the nice uh, side of the Dragon Glass API that can actually enhance your capabilities. Yeah, totally understand that you guys are, are giving a demo on, on Dragon Glass. And, and there's a lot of ways that anyone interested can go and learn how to program smart contracts and, and things like that. Um, so it totally makes sense. Thank you guys so, so much for this demo and this example application. Um, if you have any questions about Open Crowd, ways that you can use their APIs, how to get in touch with them, um, you can see their, their contact information here, uh, info at opencrowd.com, uh, or just go to opencrowd.com, and they're pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, so I do have a, a few more housekeeping items on today's um, virtual meetup, if you guys wouldn't mind letting me share my screen again. Thank you, thank you guys so much there. Um, and and any, anyone, I really encourage you, we'll let you know whenever that code is available and published online, um, either myself on Twitter or the Dragon Glass and Open Crowd team. Uh, we'll let you know how you can download and get started with that demo application and kind of end-to-end -end test that out yourself. Um, so very briefly, I just wanted to do and walk through two or three tutorials or code demos using the Hedera Hashgraph JavaScript SDK. Um, I'm not going to go end-to-end -end set the, this, this up or anything like that. I actually did that in the last uh, Hedera virtual meetup, if you want to watch that one and see how to get started. Um, and then after that, I'll just point you to some resources and information for Hedera. So let me pull open my code environment here for you. Cool. And so I just wanted to walk through two very quick demos of Hedera Hashgraph's new JavaScript SDK. So this first one is going to be how to create a file on the Hedera Hashgraph network. Um, it's a very simple demo. And if you're, you're curious how you can set up this, this dot environment and this Hashgraph SDK stuff that you see up here, uh, again, please watch our last uh, Hedera virtual meetup from last month where I kind of walk you through that process. Uh, it would also elaborate how this is kind of just creating your or grabbing that information from your environment, which is just this local file that you have here. This is making sure that you have that information available to use. And then your client is actually establishing and creating your connection to the Hedera network. But down here is the actual interesting part of our file service, which is this is how you create your new file transaction. You can set the contents of your file. You can define an admin or operator key. And then you can actually execute this file and send it to the network. So this is a very, very simple demo. But this is actually everything that you need to be able to write and create files on Hedera Hashgraph. So I'll very quickly just try to run this. And we'll see if it uh, goes through successfully. Node examples file create. And you can see that I now have a file that exists at 14.6.426. And so just to kind of go full circle here, um, I'll go and I'll go all the way to dragonglass.me. And I will go and enter the public test network and see if my account and, and check this on their network and see uh, where this file was created at. I actually forgot um, where I'm storing that file. Or uh, I forgot which account I used to create this file is what I should have said. Um, I believe it should be this one. 
or it could be All right, I could uh, be mistaken, or, or maybe there's an issue with the uh, the test network here. Let me try this other account one more time. Okay, may maybe it's an issue on my end. Um, so the next example that I will give is actually going to be the first demo of the Hedera Hashgraph consensus service that we have available to date. And this is using a very, very early version of the Hedera Hashgraph JavaScript SDK. And you should be able to download and install this yourself. So what you can see is I'm importing different portions of this Hedera Hashgraph JavaScript SDK here. And I'm importing a text encoder, so a way that we can actually encode or decode our text. This mirror node address is actually just an IP address that you're able to get if you want to sign up for Hedera Hashgraph's early access, uh, early access program for the consensus service. And so signing up for this, you're actually able to get access to the gRPC API for the Hedera consensus service. But there's also a variety of places like Dragon Glass that you'd be able to get this information from with their new subscription service and Kabuto or other types of network explorers and API providers for Hedera Hashgraph. But I highly recommend going to uh, learn.hedera and I will provide you a, a more readable URL here at the end. But so what we're doing here, and, and you can see it's just like our other APIs, is we're creating a new consensus topic. We're getting the record, which will actually contain the new ID for that topic. So this is creating a new topic with the Hedera consensus service. And this is confirming what the name, the name or the idea of that topic is. Here, we're actually subscribing to a mirror node API, which is you know, Dragon Glass or Kabuto, just like the demos and the subscription services that they just talked about. You could plug in the Dragon Glass API here. And so this will basically print out our messages as they're received from that Hedera mirror node. And right here, we're basically just going to go and create 10 new consensus messages. So these are messages that we're submitting to the Hedera consensus service. After this, this should actually be everything that you need for a kind of end-to-end -end Hedera consensus service test. So you're creating your topic, you're listening to messages within that topic, and you're submitting 10 transactions to that uh, topic. So this is the first time I've actually ever tried to run this demo here. It's node consensus.js. And you can see we're going to get a lot of output here because I'm actually logging all of the, the receipts and transactions. But I'll, I'll walk you through what's going on here. At the very beginning, this first transaction record is going to be creating that HTS topic. And that first creation should include the topic ID or the, the channel that you can listen to messages with the consensus service. After that, all of our messages are going to be set to this topic and listen to that. And so you can see we should have 10 transactions subsequently after that, which are all submitted. And you can see the consensus timestamp and time that they were received from the network and all that, all that good stuff you would expect. But if you get to the bottom of this, we should actually see that we have our hello HCS messages coming in from our Hedera mirror network and are reading them in the order that they were submitted. And so this is really nice. This is actually the whole uh, kind of end-to-end -end demo of how you're able to use the Hedera consensus service. And so while I have you, uh, I do want to say, I'm going to try to stop sharing my screen. I do want to say that this is really just an engineering update. This is something that the Hedera consensus service was actually deployed to the public test network today for the first time. This is not something that is supposed to be a, you know, huge news. This is really for the hardcore engineers tuning in and listening today so that you're able to now kind of start to formulate your ideas and your applications to test and use the software and help us get it from kind of its alpha and beta state 
to mature software like people would come to expect with Hedera. And so we're really, really excited that people are able to start using this and able to start playing around with it today. Um, this is, you know, very, very exciting and something that we've been looking forward to at Hedera for a long time. Um, let me try to share my screen again, if I can. Uh, here we are. Um, and so if you want to sign up for access to the Hedera Consensus Service, you can go to learn.hedera.com backslash HCS dash EAP. So that's the Hedera Consensus Service Early Access Program. Um, and there you're going to get access to all the information and resources that you need. We're actually doing really close tight knit feedback groups so we can actually make sure that these people building on the consensus service have great experiences that we can implement and iterate on their feedback as quickly as possible and get HCS to version one, you know, as quickly as we can. Um, for anyone who has questions about things that we covered today or in the future, as you're getting started with these applications, please join our discord chat at hedera.com backslash discord. Um, if you don't have access to a Hedera account, please sign up on portal.hedera.com. We do have a new and super easy to use registration path to get access to that test network information. Um, and once you're in there, you're going to see links to this early access program and, and ways that you can get started building. Um, additionally, please feel free to follow me, the Hedera team, Open Crowd or Dragon Glass on Twitter. Uh, it's a super easy way to get in touch with all of us. And our next virtual meetup is going to be mid-February, uh, probably a month from now as we're gaining this kind of regular cadence. Um, and you can get details on, on what we're going to talk about and register in advance at hedera.com backslash virtual meetup. Um, so thank you all so much for, for joining us today. Um, I think that that is all that we have, and we're going to stick around. I know the open crowd team is still here. We're going to stick around for, for some Q&A. Oh, sounds good. We will see if, uh, if you have any questions or anything, please put them in the uh, YouTube chat, and we will uh, stick around for a few minutes. Any questions here? Some people uh, seem to like our demos. Thank you guys a lot. So is this available on mainnet, not test network? I assume that they're talking about consensus service. I could be wrong, or maybe maybe Dragonglass. Dragonglass is definitely connected to both the mainnet, or you can switch to the test net, and everything that ran today was running off the of mainnet. Uh, so Hedera's consensus service, the hush hush, as Nick from Hash Hash would like to call it, update for our engineers out there, is that the consensus service is now available on the Hedera public test network. If you want access to the mirror node APIs that you will need to subscribe and listen for, for consensus service topics, you'll have to sign up at that HCS early access program or talk to third parties like Dragonglass here uh, who can get you set up with that historical data that you're going to need. Um, there is no timeline yet on when that is going to reach main network. Obviously, the goal of putting it out for this engineering update is to get real world usage and people testing it so that we're able to see what it's like in a real world environment. And based off that iteration and that product feedback, we're going to then decide how long until probably it takes to get to the main network. Um, it will be very, very stable and thoroughly tested uh, by the time that it gets to the main network. 
Yeah, it is literally a test network. So it's a test, it's a network. We're going to test all of our changes out and, and those fun things before uh, putting them in the, the live environment. Um, very, very excited. There's a lot of demo applications, tutorials, documentations, everything that you would expect uh, to come out with the Hedera Consensus Service underway. This is the very, very early days of opening access and letting people use it. Um, very, very uh, excited for, for what's to come. Any other questions while you have us all here? All right. Well, if there aren't any more uh, questions, I think I will uh, let the uh, Dragonglass team who's on the East Coast joining us have a good rest of their night. And I look forward to everyone who's joining us in our next virtual meetup in February. Thank you all and, and have a great day.